believe it or not, he actually goes against these guys. Now, on top of Mark's head, we placed a helmet. A little protection, something his parents should have thought about a long time ago, apparently. And if you kids understand that joke, you have really bad parents. Okay. Now, on top of this helmet, we placed a melon. It is a real melon. We are going to have the knights ride down with sharp sword in the attempt, well, not to just cut that melon in half. That would be too easy. Instead, we're going to award our knights victory to the knight who's able to cut that melon closest to the top of the helmet without turning Marco into dice fruit. What do you say? Do you want to see it? I said, do you want to see it? Okay, here comes Andrew, set, ready to charge on. Your voice is for Andrew. Oh. Um, did he actually cut it or did he just hit the helmet? Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? I... Did that come from the bottom? Oh my goodness, it did. Ladies and gentlemen, instant replay on these phones down here. You caught it, did you? That is a piece of melon skin. He did it! Okay, now Marco, I hate to say this, but as the rules state, the knight who's able to cut it closest to the helmet is victorious. That means that the next three knights have to try and cut the skin and place it on top of your head. Do you have any last words? All right, keep your hands in there to protect yourself. Okay, okay. All right. Bomb the opponent. I don't believe we're doing this. Bomb the opponent going into the list. Bob the Pong has a sword. Can Bob cut that melon skin? Oh my! I don't believe it. Are you serious? He did it! This is not a joke. You saw it, didn't you? You saw it. This is even thinner now. It's going back up on your head. So, you remember when you left high school, you had grade nine, and you said, I'm going to have a great future? Well, guess what? You're going to be seen by millions of people on TikTok right now. Okay. All right. And the Chinese are going to go, there's no way we're ever going to attack the United States. Those people are crazy. Okay. In the list right now, Larry the Beast Dupler. Can Larry cut that melon skin? All right, no answer. Um, can Larry smash Marco in the head? <laughs> it's about to come. Here we go. He's going to try and cut that melon. Can he do it? Oh. Oops. That was a swing and a, well, it wasn't a miss, it was a swing and a hit. Where'd the skin go? It's there. I don't believe we're playing with watermelon skin, but we seriously are. It's back up on his head. Okay. The melon is there. The only way the Canadian can be victorious here is if he rides down and cuts that melon skin in half. Who believes that this veteran in the sport of jousting is off? Oh, thanks for telling us. Where did it go? Oh, yeah, it's behind him. Marco, you moved. Stay there. Stay there. There we go. There we go. Uh, Marco, put your hand up here and hold on to it. This is, this is testing. No, this is testing. Okay. It's up there. Uh, can you give me a little piece of dirt? A little piece of dirt. Yeah, put the dirt on. Perfect. Okay, stand back up. Stand back up. Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, a couple of granules of sand up there. TJ Duquette with sword in hand. Are you ready? Shocking down, full speed.
Tu y viens Ladies and gentlemen, I would usually say in great disgust and announce that TJ would win. But I'm not going to today. Because in truth, we have to acknowledge the one person that can lie down and cut a slice of watermelon skin has to be a person from Ohio. Bob the opponent! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bob the opponent slices watermelon skin to be victorious and defeat the Canadian in this international competition of cutting watermelon skins. A handful of gold goes to Bob the Ponin! Who wants gold? <laughs> Alright, big question here for the audience, big question. Who amongst you received some gold? Raise your hand. Okay. Who did not receive any gold? Raise your okay. hand. All right, for everyone who's received one, unwrap it, take a lick, and just pass it behind you. No, nope. too soon, too soon after go, too soon. Okay, no more plays, no more plays. All right, well, you didn't come here to watch near Squire games, did you? What did you come here to see? And I ask you, shall we have a joust? Now, my lords and ladies, this is where our show turns to the real thing. Bob Napoleon, unfortunately, because of an injury yesterday, he will not be helping up, but he will go down in history as the watermelon skin slicer. These other three knights, though, Larry Dubler, Andrew Hoffman, and TJ Duquette, will be competing for the title of the Ohio Scottish Games and Celtic Fest champion in the Jeffs. Now, how many of you have seen Jousting before? How many of you have never seen Jousting before? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're in for a treat because the Knights of Valor is the only full contact jousting company in the world. Meaning that a lot of other companies out there use lances that have been hollowed out or cut or made out of balsa wood to explode on impact. Our knights are actually using lances of war. Inch and a quarter, Douglas fir or pine lances, um, about 11 feet long, that take about 1,600 pounds of tensile strength to break. Meaning, you have to hit your opponent with 1,600 pounds of force to shatter a lance. Now the style of this joust is called the Realgestick. Everybody say Realgestick. Now, Realgestick is one of the most dangerous styles of jousting. You see, in most styles of jousting, the armor is designed in such a way to deflect the impact force away from a knight's body, because they were smart. However, there was a bunch of other knights who decided, well, we're going to go ahead and make a grid, and bolt that grid right to our breastplates, out of buff to protect our necks, because surely, when the lances lock into these grids, Lances will shatter and possibly splinter everywhere, even some of them flying towards you, the crowd. So if you see a broken lance piece coming at you, it really is a broken lance piece coming at you. Duck, dodge, move it away, hold up a small child, use them as a shield. It's a Scottish festival. We can make more. Now, if a lance flies into the crowd and you get impaled by a lance, you can keep it as a souvenir! We'll even sign it at the end of the show. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, many people think that jousting is just some barbaric sport, and all we're trying to do is unhorse our friends off the back of the horses to the ground below. Well, yeah, you're right, we are, because it's the most amount of points. As you see, there is a point structure in this violent sport. We are going to award one point for a touch to that gritty grand guard. Five points 
Should a knight strike with enough force that it shatters his lance in front of the van plate? That's the handle that they hold on to. If it breaks behind that handle, only one point for the touch. If it explodes in front of that handle, five points for the shattered lance. And then ultimately, and it happened yesterday a few times, if a knight is able to strike with enough force to unseat his opponent to the ground below, that should be worth 10 points and perhaps victory this day, plus the crowd will go absolutely insane! Let's be honest, you're not here to watch just a simple jousting show. You people want violence, don't you? And the Knights of Valor is respected as one of the most unnecessary violent jousting companies in the world. Yep, that's us. <laughs> Now, with that said, of course, we've been featured on many different movies, many television shows. Our hit show, of course, Full Metal Jousting, has seen on history. T.J. Duquette, he was actually the assistant coach on the red team for Full Metal Jousting, plus some of our horses, and well, Superman up here was carrying Bob to victory. Superman was on that TV show as well. So again, a nice round of applause for that TV show, and of course, all the members of the show that made it possible. You were on the show, that's I know, that's what you said. Bob and Superman, that's right. Bob was there as actually one of the chief squires, and he's, he's uh, even though he was a veteran knight, even at that time, Bob, you were like considered a veteran knight at that time, uh, Bob uh, was able to allow a lot of the contestants from the TV show, be able to share his knowledge, and training from the ground up and help that show become a success. Uh, now, here it is today, though, Bob is gonna help us at one end of the field, and he, as well, is gonna actually help us diligently here. Um, you know what? Yeah, Bob, will you be a judge here at one end? Stay at this end, okay? Perfect, yeah, okay, Bob's gonna stay at this end. Okay, well, let's get another pin for Andrew. Um, do we have any extra pins? Uh, Marco, I need you to run up and get another pin for the helmet. We, we can't have a, get somebody else's helmet, pull a pin. I'm sorry ladies and gentlemen, we have a little bit of a delay here. Andrew didn't check his equipment before it came down. And the visor, that's right, the visor does not have a pin. We can't have him charged down without the pin, and we need all the squires on the deck here right now to be able to help uh, get this joke going. At the same time, though, TJ Duquette, he himself is getting into the armor. Now, people have questions about the armor. The armor that TJ is wearing is 165 pounds. TJ, in his suit of armor, is over 500 pounds. So, riding a 2,000 pound war horse, charging down uh, this joust list at, well, let's say 25 miles an hour, that's 2,500 pounds, charging at 25 miles an hour against almost the same amount of speed and force coming at him. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a collision of 50 miles an hour at 5,000 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're about to see is the demolition derby of the medieval ages! Now the first joust today will be between TJ and Larry. TJ and Larry, go ahead, enter the list please. I'm trying to this and give it a little more time. Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, at the far end, in the green and black, that is T.J. Duquette from Canada. Right here in the red and black, on top of Cyrus, that is Larry Bupler, originally from Ohio. Now remember the louder you cheer, the harder these knights will hit. The louder you cheer, the faster these horses will go. And you want a fast, hard-hitting chance, do you not? One point, one point. 
A good hit. Broken Lance is on the field. Ladies and gentlemen, what did you think of that pass? The score, five to one, starting out. Knights, receive your matches. TJ's received. Larry's received. And the crowd goes crazy! The score right now, six to six. Make some noise. All right. We have two more passes in this chest. That's right, two more passes. This is the third pass. Third pass. We're going to do passes of four. Knights, get receive your lances. TJ has received. Larry receiving his lance. Knights, come about. hit the pauldron, that's the elbow protection. Elbow protection, that's the pauldron. Only, uh, no point scored on that one. We are still at a tie, six to six. Going right to the very end here, right to the very end. Knights, receiving their lances. TJ has received. Larry has received. Knights coming about. And the crowd goes nuts. Five points. Five points. That's right. TJ Duquette, five points. Larry Duper, one point. Larry stays in the list. Larry stays in the list. TJ, he wins the joust. Larry a score of 11 to 7, 10 to 11, TJ Lucat. Entering into the list now, Andrew Hoffman has a chance to go up against Larry. Larry has a chance to get back into this competition. We are going to have this as, of course, the qualifying judge to see who goes up against the winner, TJ Duquette. Ladies and gentlemen, are you enjoying the sport so far? Knights, receive your lances. Head the horse, please. Head the horse. Head the horse. Head the horse. All right. Andrew has his lance. Larry receiving his lance. Knights coming about. And the crowd goes nuts. On target, Broken Lance, Larry Dupler, five points. One point for Andrew Hoffman, one point. The score right now, five, ladies and gentlemen, five to one in favor of Larry Dupler. These men are definitely rock stars in the sport of jousting out here banging for you. Three more passes, three more passes. Knights receive your lance. Knights receive, Knights coming about. And the crowd goes crazy. Off target, off target. Andrew Hoffman off target, that was on the pass guard, off target. Plus they did a really good job of knocking down all the jousters here. One point on target for Larry Dupler, he's now at six. Go back there, hold on to that horse piece. All right, one more stanchion to pick up. Just back him up, hold him in place, keep him calm. There we go. Communication is key with these horses. Andrew, of course, first time on the lawn, doing a great job. 
All right, Knights, receive your lances. The score again, six to one in favor of the Beast. Larry Dufour. Fix the list, fix the list, fix the list. Mark Good 
stay there, Larry Bugler, he stays on, pluck feathers from an ostrich there. Wow, TJ Duquette comes in, hits on the plate, hooks that lance, almost takes Larry up off the back, Larry stuck it, however TJ breaks his lance, TJ in the lead with five, Larry on target, he's now at two. Five to two, we have two more passes left, ladies and gentlemen. Two more passes, do you want to see it? Knights, yeah! receive your lances. Yeah! TJ's received. Knights yeah! coming about. And the crowd goes wild. gets knocked to the side, holds on to it, and pulls himself back up. He breaks his lance. He's now at seven. TJ Duquette is at six. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one pass left. One pass. Who is going to win? Will it be the American? And if you want to go 